Did Verve have any mannerisms? I don't remember if Verve had any manner mannerisms. Or was she mannerless? She might have been mannerless, right? You shot lightning at people when you're upset. That's true. You did get kind of sparky. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition campaign, Return to Reichland. It's been a while. About two months, according to my math. Uh, we took a break due to... Uh, we lost a player for scheduling reasons. And then we kind of uh, took off some time for health and mental health and stuff like that. But we're back. So uh, our dwarf, played by Faunix, did have to retire due to scheduling issues. He essentially left the campaign during the last session. So a lot of you noted that he wasn't there. And that was because of scheduling. And it kind of became like a permanent issue. So uh, he decided to step out of the campaign, which is totally fine and cool. So we might replace him at some point, but for right now, we're just going to keep running with three. And uh, so for those of you who want to know what happens with, uh, I think his name was, Dr uh, was it Drake Frost Axe or Drac Frost? Drac Frost Drax. Axe. Um, we might see him again in the future if his schedule gets light. Um, but if we don't, all you really need to know is that he essentially received a missive from his connections at Karasakarak that ordered him to return to one of the nearby mountain holds immediately due to some pressing issues uh and being that he is a representative of the norskin dwarves his presence was heavily required but last time we left we left off with the party helped anders the mm, personally funded archaeologist and partner to bronze so uh, is, i think it was bronze silverhand the wizard who runs the camp that our party is a part of they helped him get to the mysterious cave, uh, which uh, they learned a little bit more about Roganbach, the forgotten god, so to speak, of the Hager Cribs. They learned uh, about some really powerful magical trees they're supposed to keep a lookout for, known as the Hager Creepers. They uh, they also uh, just uh, random things that we're remembering. But they met Hugo Kraus, who is the who is the main. Mm, diplomat i would say but also he's professionally a merchant that uh backs the uh whatever this group is it'll come back to me but the group the that, that y'all silverwood are mining company yes yeah. the silverwood mining co and uh the um the uh mercenaries as well so uh but he gave y'all a ride into town so we are back in jettenberg which is a nice populated city we did of course have a couple of small incidents last time um vertstat played by aztec the human uh bright wizard uh did retire fairly early but unfortunately he seems to have come down with something because he keeps waking up tired despite all of his efforts i know how that feels then we have verve the wood elf heavens wizard along with the halfling wrist who went to the uh local temple uh, or academy i should say to try and do a little bit of research but unfortunately verve caused a little bit of a scene to the extent that the resident rune lord uh got dragged into affairs and actually kind of stared her down to force her out and uh, other than that verve tried to locate some kind of specialist elven clothing but didn't seem to be hitting any grand success at least here in the city um and wrist actually managed to uh secure himself he paid up front for a halfling sized breastplate from one of the local smiths but he at some point before they leave town will have to go back and acquire that and at this point they are allowed to just wander town look for things they might be interested in buying with the money they have whether that's acquiring services or particular goods and then when y'all are ready to go back, you simply have to go back to the temple and you can send a missive and Hugo Kraus will come to pick you guys up on his way back to Hagerdorf. There, we're caught up. <laughs> Huzzah. Yay. So, shopping trip. It's, it's, we're in the beach episode now of this particular anime. Um, if anybody wants to pick up some particular... Is that a thing? Yes, but that's it's not <laughs> um every every anime has a beach episode <laughs> is the joke huh. it's not necessarily true but it's true a lot of the time well you can tell how much i watch anime yeah there you go 
All right. So, um, is is there anyone who has a particular like aha that they want to do right now before I just start throwing out possible options? Uh, yes, yes, I need to visit an apothecary. Okay, uh, that should be fairly easy to find. All you have to do is roll a. Um, what's your what's your natural gossip at? Um, sixty. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, you you ask around a little bit, and are you able to read? I am not. Okay, go ahead and roll a gossip, but it's very easy. So plus uh, plus. But he does 60. have me next to him, if I recall. Well, y'all separated at the end of the last session. Did you want to reunite, or do y'all want to be kind of doing your own thing in the meeting? Because I could have swore that we ended it with me and him still together. If not, uh, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, let's for now say you didn't. That way y'all can meet up in the evening. Sounds good. It's uh, been yeah, a very it... long time, so if you're watching this, you'll have to yeah. forgive us if, we're, if we forget a few things while we're getting back into it. If Verv wants to hang around, we can all go to the apothecary. And she can read me the signs. Okay, y'all. you know what? Fine, y'all can just go together. Do that. Okay. Yeah, hand in hand. Well, that's probably uh... be very difficult, because you'd have to raise your hand, right? I don't want to jump to touch. <laughs> but yes, I go forth and seek the apothecary, and I will push the door open. All right, with Ver's help, you're easily able to find it uh, just by kind of asking around. People give you very vague directions, but with someone who can actually read the signs, it's quite easy for you to find. So you walk in to uh, one of the local apothecaries in Gentenburg, which is, of course, a very official one. So there, when you walk in, it's it, it's a very uh, laboratory almost setting. Though the walls, uh, there are tons and tons of shelves with like little wooden boxes that have little labels on the front that describe what's inside. And uh, there seem to be little pouches of leather that you can basically grab what you need to place it in and then purchase it at the counter. And there is an elderly gentleman with a long, he has a very long pointed beard and very curiously has a very fine waxed mustache that has a strange set of curls to it. It almost looks like he has whiskers. They're so long and uh, thinly grouped into little spirals. And he seems very consumed with a some sort of inventory set that he's looking at. He's got tons of crinkled paper in front of him and doesn't seem to notice your existence. I'm going to make one note. I will make sure I have my hood up. Yes, that will be assumed um, unless you say otherwise. Um, and then before we go in, I will tell Rist, I'll, I'll, I'll basically be like, you can do the talking if you don't want another incident. Oh, of course. I'm more than happy to do the talking. And I will just kind of hang out, like, um, around the door. I'll be inside, but I'll be, like, hanging around the door, kind of looking at things. All right, I will walk up to the counter and kind of step back so that he can still see me. And cough. Ah, <clears throat> oh, good morning, sir. You have a fine establishment here. Very pretty. And that is a beautiful mustache. I don't know how you get it to squire like that. But it looks great. Ah, oh, I can't really get the mustache myself, but it's a good thing to see one done so fine. Uh, he, he dips the quill that he's working with into a pot of ink and starts scribbling on some paper and very gruffly only responds, What do you need help with? Oh, I'm looking for some of those very uh, ecumenical items that are known as healing draughts. Uh, he for a friend. He, he nods without even bothering to look up and says, Very back, third shelf on the right, second row from the bottom, third jar to the left. Thank you, sir. I'll be right back. And I will go look at this third jar to the left. All right, you see a uh, uh, a very large jar with all, all some prepackaged, essentially leather pouches inside of it, and uh, most of them are filled with some kind of vial. And there's a bunch of writing on them and on the outside of the larger jar, but you can't, of course, read any of it. Farv, Farv, what did he say? Is this the same thing? I will pick up two of them and compare the squiggly work lines on it. What do I see? They claim, uh, they claim to be Jetton's, uh, the, the Jetton Healer Supreme, the highest quality of healing draughts found, 
north of the Middle Mountains. Do I have a value or anything of that nature? I'm guessing that's just a perception check. Uh, evaluate is an actual skill. Um, you should it's have advanced. it, though. Yeah, it might be advanced. Um, let me uh, check. I think it's a wizardy thing. If it is, I do not have it. Because wiz... Because... Uh, let's see. Oh, no, I'm still in talents. No, oh, evaluate is master wizard. Oh, figures. Okay. So you'll just have to take his word for it. Um, is the... I will point towards the words verb just told me. Is this the name of the shop? I'm guessing it is. Yes, it's called, uh, it's called, um, Jen's, Jen's Augments and Apothecary. I will nod. Alright, I will take three of them and wander does back Does it say over. how much they are before he does that? Uh, yes. One second. Uh, for healing draughts, uh, it, it, it has a, in a rather fancy script, it has a mark of a, uh, one second. Uh, check on the file, I see if it's in stock. Okay, it is in stock. Okay, uh... Yes, it has a mark of, uh, it has a mark of, oh gosh, let's see, it's 12 crowns, or it's 12 silver to a crown and 20 brass 20 silver. 20 silver to a right. crown. No, oh, right, it's the other way. So it's 20 silver to a crown and 12 brass to a silver? Is that what it is? Yes. Okay, good. Just, uh, so he has it noted one, it says one G. I will tell Rist it says 1G, which I'm guessing is gold crown. Probably. Ah, oh, that sounds familiar. G. G. But I will also look at him and say, that's, is that, like, that seems a bit steep. Oh, well, it's the best, you said, north of the Grey Mountains. Do you really trust Does... that? Well, he looks, and I will look over at him and think, kind of reputable I mean he's got a marvelous mustache um, I will look at wrist and say do you think one of these is going to help our friend um I'm gonna start walking with verve towards the counter keeping this conversation going oh I'm sure it'll help him it says here, you said, that it's the best north of the Grey Mountains. Does get you wondering, though, who's the best south of the Grey Mountains? Must be steep competition. Effie can't get into that market. I will shrug. I don't know enough of these lands to uh, be able to assume. Well, I mean, aren't your folks south of the mountains? I will kind of blink and... Um say yes oh, but... well, maybe they've got some master apothecary there well, shame you didn't certainly. bring any over with you but I think what we c can create and what I will kind of lower my voice this place can create would be wildly different I want to see if he's listening in or completely ignoring this conversation as we approach. He, he seems very invested in whatever he's doing. The, you notice that there is a sign that you can't read, but Verve can. And it actually says, place here, and it has a big arrow drawn down, and there's a scale sitting underneath it. And this, But the man, if, if he's listening to you guys, he gives absolutely zero indication. Ah, oh, well, if it helps, it helps. Maybe I'll ask him for something specific. 
Do you remember the symptoms he had? Um. God, just said he was tired, I think. Wasn't he like, weren't you like sweating or something, or was it just tiredness? Me? Yeah. I haven't informed you guys I'm sick. Huh. Well, there we go. And we're getting it for <laughs> ourselves. I mean, they are very helpful. That is true. I just said it was for a friend to see what that would get up. And I was like, oh, yeah. maybe we did discuss this. All right, I, I will set them on the counter on the wait and say, ah, oh, Master Jatin, I'm ready to purchase some things if you don't mind. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he, he looks up and uh, narrows his white bushy eyebrows uh, at the items you place. And then he frowns a little deeper and sort of leans over his chair creaking either his chair or his bones. It's hard to say which. Um, and he looks down at you and says, I trust you are aware that these are not cheap items, Master Halfling. Oh, they're worth a G, which I believe is the seventh letter of the alphabet must be pretty valuable <laughs> his his frown deepens and i've been learning how to read uh <laughs> he he mutters under his breath uh and uh puts his quill in his ink and leaves it and uh leans forward and looks at the scale and then looks at the items it says three healing droughts that seems a little much for a halfling, unless you're into some dangerous work. Ah, yes, dangerous work. Probably. More likely, I'd like to not be in any dangerous work. But also, I'd like to have Shalya's healing smile looking down on me, in the shape of these fine vials of your marvelous, ah, uh, best north of the Grey Mountains elixir things. Uh, he lets out a harumph. And then uh, turns to the side and scribbles on some paper. And he says, that will be three crowns. Ah, oh, crowns. Why it say G then? Uh, he scowls at you and says, it stands for gold. Dwarves oh. get awfully picky about the, <laughs> the material they use to buy. And we see many dwarves here. Ah, of course, they are a bit miserly at times, always suspicious. Um, I just had a question that came to my mind after my friend here read the entire inscription of your marvellous concoctions here. Who's the best south of the Grey Mountains? Your rival, as it were. Uh, he gets a somewhat bemused look on his face and says, Oh, I wouldn't say there's anyone in particular. Bretonians can be very mm, suspicious of apothecaries. In their culture, it tends to carry a wizardly tone to it. Bunch of damned fools. What? The frog eaters are worried about what they put in their mouth? Uh, he, he chuckles uh, and says, Wouldn't want their grubby paws touching my materials anyway. Knights, pompous, arrogant bastards. Oh, right the sound. Wasting all fine coin on some silly horses. Uh, he uh, nods somewhat and then taps his finger. He starts tapping his uh, index finger on the table and says, Three crowns, Master Halfling. My time is precious. All right, then. I will set three crowns on the table. And I want to make a haggle check, not to lower my price, but to see if I can get extra information out of him. Since your time is valuable, how about we skip this haggling business, and you can just tell me a little extra information I was wondering about, about the local flora and apothecary stuff in the area. Uh, that would technically fall under gossip, unless you're wanting to get some information you think would actually be secretive. Well, I'll do gossip then. Okay. Okay. Uh, he uh he he frowns and looks down at his paperwork and says, "Well, I suppose I can take just a minute." And he slowly. I will hand wrist my bag with my red vine blood torch in it. He slowly uh starts to stand and he looks at you, Verve, and he 
he sort of narrows his eyes and adjusts his glasses um, to look at you, and, but he just sort of, he, he only looks for a couple seconds and then starts moving again. And uh, he looks at the two of you and says, are you in, in any particular rush? Oh, no, I got whole day. He nods and says, then perhaps I will make some tea. Oh, that sounds lovely. I will go on and explain my favorite type of tea and how it's made. To, like, add three lumps of sugar, stir counterclockwise three times. Although he nods absentmindedly while you're describing what your favorite tea would be be made of, you note that he very astutely is not doing anything that you would suggest. I, I am fine with this. Uh, he spends a few minutes just sort of listening to you ramble and not really interjecting and just nodding absentmindedly. But after after about 15 minutes, he, uh, he uh, comes walking back with three cups and sets it down and slowly sits back down uh, into his very creaky chair. And he moves some papers aside and he, he uh, takes his cup and then slowly slides the, uh, pl- the wooden platter over to the two of you. Oh, thank you very much. I will will. take a sip with my acute sense. Okay. Uh, With your acute sense of taste, it is a... It is a very... This is a man who has probably perfected the art of making tea over decades. The only downside is clearly he prefers his tea to basically be... it's, It's very earthy. It's very... He's not someone that seems to believe in adding anything beyond maybe like a hint of honey. It's almost like he basically just throws in a very nice supportive blend of plants. But it's certainly not, it's not very sweet. Um, It's it's a very grounded type of flavor. It's not bad though. (laughs) Ah, This is a very refined and specific taste. You must have worked really hard on it. He, He nods and says... One thing that halflings are reliable for, I suppose, is appreciating taste. You should try it, Verb. It's great. I will look at the halfling and then look at the man and snatch one of the cups. That's very earthy. I'm sure you'll love it. I I will turn back to Jetton. So I've recently come to the idea that I would like to know more about the local edible flora in the region uh he he sort of uh narrows his eyes and uh sits from his cup and says around the city you're not going to find much are you asking about a particular region oh yes i found myself in the great misfortune of being employed at the silverwood company uh, he, uh, he gets a little bit of a, his eyes almost seem to twinkle a little bit as he takes another sip and he says, you haven't involved yourselves with those bloody hound boys, have you? No, I hear they're a right bunch of bastards, though. Got shown a whole stack of books of how awful they are. Uh, he chuckles and nods and says, bastards, I think is a fair term. So you're up in the Hager cribs, then? Ah, oh, that would be the case. Uh, he leans back in his chair and uh, scratches at his chin and says, I could recommend a few of the... And he looks up again and he goes, I'm sorry, were you asking about plants or animals? Uh, plants, for the most part. He nods and, and he... Goes on to describe to you a couple of um, fairly common plants that can be found up there. And he basically gives you a very, he, he, in a very old mannish, polite, but not really way, he basically gives you an ingredient to make a very cheap healing poultice. But he notes that you would probably need someone who actually has a vague idea of what they're doing to have a hope of it actually being useful. But it can be used using a couple of the native plants up there that are very easy to find if you just walk around in the forest a bit. Okay. I continue chatting with him about the qualities of different plants that I know of to basically do some shop talk about 
what I know in terms of cooking and that. And I basically wanted to spend some time building rapport before I pull out Verve's bag and be like, so there's just sticky stuff on the end of this torch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you pull it out and, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember what y'all got that from. Uh, I think Aztec said Hager Creepers. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just trying. Where's my freaking page about the Hager Creepers? Because I know I have a page on them. Uh, All right, um, I will just have to run with what I know off the top of my head. That's fine. All right, he he looks down at it, and he he sort of frowns, and he says, because um, it's kind of like a blood reddish sap, right? The trees that look like they bleed. Yeah. 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 Um, he, he sort of frowns at it and says, I wouldn't be carrying that around uh, with you if you're journeying through the wilds. Ah, oh, that, that bad. He uh, shakes his head and says, it's not dangerous in and of itself. The Hager Creepers are, let's just say that they are trees that tend to gather strange, mm, they, they tend to be magically charged, I suppose you could say. Carrying around that sap with you is basically like carrying around a freshly roasted boar in the middle of a place full of beastmen. You're essentially just asking for trouble. Uh, ah, I hand it back to Verve. You can hold on to that. Ha, these are the best healing drops, you said? He nods and says that you'll find here. If you want actual, if you want something better, you'd have to travel up the river to Altdorf, most likely. But the price would be probably not worth the trip. Well, they do always try to rip you off on those boat barges. Uh, I will speak up for like the first time and say, these Hager Creepers, why do they draw beastmen so? Uh, he, he frowns when you speak, and he sort of looks up at you and he peers again. Um, and uh, he starts drumming his fingers on the table and say, I've heard that accent before. You're a long way from home, aren't you? I will simply nod. Uh, he nods and says, Used to have a courier with one of your kind, though not out though I haven't worked with the folk outside of that part of the world in a long time. Still get the occasional package in from Larlorn, but it's different. They're different. He sort of shakes his head and says, in any event, the Hager Creepers don't attract beastmen, per se. They just attract creatures that are drawn to magic. Darkness. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he, frowns down at the, he frowns heavily down at the halfling about the interruption and says, it's not darkness. Hager Creeper Sap has extraordinary properties that can be used for many ungents and potions. It's a very useful alchemical tool. However, most people don't consider it worth the risk of harvesting because it tends to attract various beasts and creatures. I'm not sure why could be the flavor. It does have a very coppery taste. It's unpleasant. Oh, I'll spare myself that taste test then. Uh, he nods and says, if you know what's good for you, you'll never eat Hager Creeper sap. It can be used, but it needs to be diluted properly. Pure sap, though the, what you've got there is already too, likely hardened too much by now, is dangerous to directly intake unless you have some kind of way to output what you're consuming. What kind of things could it be used for? He sort of shrugs, leaning back absentmindedly, and says, 
Mostly wizard nonsense. I can't say I know too much about it myself. As an apo a licensed apothecary, there are strict rules about the types of potions I am, am and am not allowed to craft. I'm sure if I was broad enough Haker Creeper sap on the regular, I could make something. Perhaps a way to create some kind of attractive ward for certain kinds of creatures. You could use it to protect from certain things. Would be very helpful dealing with spirits. I know that some of the tribes that live up in the mountains used to use it ages ago to protect themselves from the dead walking again or nonsense creatures they say would come out when the when Morselib was high. It's all mystical nonsense, of course, just crazy rumors from superstitious folk. But I'm, it has its uses. I'm gonna like get very close to wrist and kneel down and whisper to wrist, um, uh, Roganbach. 